Welcome to the official Monster Hobbies YouTube channel. Today we're going to be looking at the Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 from AMT Ertl. This is the 1993 edition. And if you want to know more about a really great channel that you can go to where we do nothing but model car unboxings, tips and techs, show and tells, and many other other cool things, stay tuned to the very end of this video and I will show you how to get there. So without further delay, let's go down to the bench and open up the lid on this great model and see what's in the box. Now let's wind the clock all the way back to 1993 as we check out this AMT Ertl Chevrolet Corvette ZR1. 1993 marked 40 years of the Corvette and the commemorative car was metallic red with a ruby red interior and some special leather seats that had the embroidered seat emblems inside of them. So here we have the AMT model. It's a skill level two kit molded in 125th scale. On this side of the box, we get this wonderful side view of our Corvette on the grid type of background. And then over here, we get our write-up. This is a two-seat front engine rear-wheel drive sports coupe. The engine is a 405 horsepower, 32 valve, dual overhead cam, 5.7 liter V8 with tuned port injection. We've got the six-speed manual. The wheels are standard 17-inch Corvette wheels. You got Goodyear GS-C tires, optional 40th anniversary decals, over 80 parts, full color decals, paint and cement is not included. On this side of the box, we get some of the features of the model kit. This looks like that ruby red metallic they were talking about. There's the flip forward front hood, the 405 horsepower 32 valve V8, and our detailed interior. On the bottom of the box, we actually have this 1993 Be A Winner Sweepstakes contest. And this is all the official rules and the dates for when the contest ran and when it ended. Now let's open up the lid on the wonderful Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 and see what's in the box. So right away, I've actually kept a lot of these receipts and everything. So there's one of them for $21.39. There's the winner sweepstakes. That's a shrink wrap with the sticker on it. Here we have our instruction sheet. It says I bought it at Chinook and Hobby West for $21.99 on June 11th, 2003. Now Chinook and Hobby West is no longer around. And then here we've got our clear glass. There we've got the uh, sweepstakes blue printer uh, mail-in voucher thing. There's the receipt from Chinook and Hobby West. Here we've got our undercarriage. Then we've got our body and a whole bunch of parts trees, which is really great. There's our interior bucket and our Goodyear tires. There's our hood and some of our wheel backs and parts. We got our decal sheet here, which we'll take a look at at the end of this. And then we've got that wonderful chrome engine and then our smoke colored lights and signals and our tire and our tail lamps. Here we have our instructions for the ZR1 Corvette with this wonderful rear shot of our car, which of course is all a sketch, which looks really good. And then here we've got our write-up for our Corvette and it says enjoy your authentic 125th scale model of this fabulous car. Flipping the instructions over, we get all the building tips for beginner and advanced modelers, as well as the tools that we will need in order to assemble this model. So in our first panel, we have the drive belt assembly and there's our big serpentine drive belt with the alternator and the air conditioning unit as well as power steering pump. And there is a decal that goes on top of the alternator. Panel two shows our engine sub assembly. And here we've got our engine block right and left hand side, the oil pan, the water timing chain cover, our cylinder heads and the starter valley pan. All of this is chrome plated, and I do believe it is part of that Lotus V8. Now we carry on the engine assembly as we have our cam cover gluing onto our cylinder head, and then the oil filler cap being glued in place. Here we have the oil filter being glued onto this little arm out here, the intake plenum, the ignition module, the opposite cam cover, then we have a bell housing and our two-piece six-speed manual transmission being glued together. All of this hooks onto that engine block from the previous step. 
Figure four shows our final engine assembly. Here we have the crossover coolant pipe being glued down to the block. Then we've got these two piece exhaust manifolds for both left and right hand side, which get glued together here and then glued onto the block. And then our entire belt assembly gets glued onto the front of the engine. Step two begins our chassis assembly. So here we have the chassis pan and then the front suspension will glue up right in here. Coming to the back of the car, we've got our chassis pan and then our control rod, our control arms left and right, the rear axle with the differential molded in place, then the drive shaft and our rear leaf spring. All of this gets glued together and then dropped onto the chassis pan. Next up, we carry on with chassis subassembly C as we glue our engine block into the chassis, making sure that the drive shaft matches up to the rear of the uh, transmission. And then we've got our upper radiator hose, our two-piece radiator, and the inlet duct being glued onto the back end of the inlet intake. We continue on by adding in our exhaust pipes and mufflers, which will glue up into here. There is a torque arm which glues onto the side of the drive shaft. Then we've got a front brace gluing in here, and our spare tire carrier being glued on at the very end. All this will make up your undercarriage. Our next panel shows our wheel assembly, and this is pretty much equal all the way down. There is a right and left hand side. So we start off with the driver's side, which is the left hand side. We have our outer wheel, and you have to note the directions on here on our wheels, as well as the direction of our Goodyear Eagle tires. They all have to rotate in the same fashion. Then we've got an axle retainer and our inner wheel in the back. All this will sandwich together and give you your left-hand side wheels. We carry on with our wheel assembly with the passenger side wheels. This is on the right-hand side. And here you'll notice that the little veins of the wheel are... They got the curve going forward and the tail at the back. That should line up with the tread pattern. The nice thing about these Goodyear Eagle tires is there are some little directional arrows molded on the side. Then you've got your wheel retainer and your inner wheel. All this sandwiches together, both front and rear, to give you those full-out tires. Panel 4 shows our chassis and wheel assembly going together. You've got a nice decal which glues up here on this side of the radiator, and then your tires will glue onto these pegs right there. Step 5 shows our interior going together. There you've got the instrument panel and our dashboard. The steering wheel and console molded as one piece goes into that hole. Then our bucket seats drop into the interior pan. And then we've got our grip, which is dropping right into here, our gear shift lever. Panel six, we get into our body assembly. Now here is preparing our windshields. So basically you remove these center beams and clean up the edges where the beams were and you'll have your rear glass and your front glass looking nice and pretty. There's our license plate decal going into the back here and then our rear red taillights going on and there's a hole here and a peg so they'll just push in nice together. Next up we have our engine bay assembly. There you've got your battery with the decal on top, our brake master cylinder being glued into place, our coolant recovery tank being glued onto the heater and the air conditioner accumulator. All that will go into our engine bay and look really great once we open the hood. Next up, we have our glass being installed into our Corvette body, as well as a rear view mirror in our interior assembly, which will hook up in place. There are location tabs which lock in up here and into the back. Underneath the hood again, we've got our windshield washer a reservoir, which will drop in place. And then our parking lights and our turn signal lights will also glue up onto the front of the bumper. In panel 7, we get our final assembly with our hood hinges being glued onto the hood, our inner fenders being glued into these little rectangles here, our headlights being glued up there and there, and then the entire hood will hook onto our body. Now here we have the body being dropped onto the assembled chassis, and then there's this nose panel which will glue in front, but don't glue it until you actually hinge the hood in, because the hood hinges have to go onto these little pins down here. These two panels show our computer box being glued in place, the ASR module, the AC line and dryer, and then down here we have the detail painting tips for items such as the little checkerboard pattern inside the logo, the red brake light, turn signals, and then we even have some decal location placements. 
We also get this wonderful interior exterior color chart with items such as Anniversary Ruby Red and the interior component colors that went with that paint job. Here we've got our body for our 1993 Corvette. And one thing that made this a little more modern than the 1990 that I reviewed earlier are the side vents. These ones are going horizontal, whereas the earlier ones were going vertical. Also, we see the great detail in here, like the sunken in Corvette lettering and the backup lights molded in beside the license plate. There's the brake light up top and again, very nicely done. Detail up underneath in the cowl area and then a sunken in Corvette license plate. The car also had the wraparound headlamps and turn signal lights. So again, that was different from the 1990 version. Up underneath, we do have some sink marks and mold lines. There's our uh, sun visors molded in place up there and a little hole for our rear view mirror. There's those pegs I was talking about up inside where you mount the lights. Overall, again, this is another one of those great little bodies by AMT slash MPC. This parts tree includes our hood components. So there's that little front bit and then our hood itself and the hinges as well as our dashboard. So let's just take a look at this wonderful dashboard. You can see the great instrumentation on there. Excellent. Look at the little vents. All really wonderful again. There's the Corvette logo on there. As we turn this over, you can see the matting and the sink marks. So you're going to have to fix those with that number 16 hobby blade. But overall, this is done really nicely. Our next parts tree includes the little inner fender wells. The headlights, our serpentine belt, and a lot of the engine underhood components. There's the wheel backs and the retainer clips. It looks like I'm missing one somewhere. Hopefully I'm not totally missing that. And then there's our radiator here and the spare tire cover. Again, nicely done. There's some great uh, headlight details actually molded onto the headlights, which is good. It's not just a blank. So then as you turn this over, you can see the nice detail on the fans on the radiator. Again, excellent looking stuff. A really wonderful model kit, easy to assemble. Here we've got our interior tub, which again has some nice detail on the center console, as well as right here, the little uh, strap there to hold all your items. Door panels are quite nice inside. And then we've got our bucket seats looking like real leather in there, our steering wheel and our gear shift lever, and the little Ertl logo on the back. Mold marks are on the bottom on here, which is quite nice. Uh, there are some underneath the seats. So again, that's all going to be hidden. Overall, I would say this is a really good interior bucket. Now these two parts trees contain the suspension components for the front and the rear axles, as well as a bunch of the underhood details and our drive shaft. So again, really nice uh, lattice work in here. Very excellent looking. Yeah. All those little modules will be fun to glue in place. Use your tweezers. Hopefully don't lose any. There's our rear axle and the braces and all the different bits, as well as our rack and pinion style steering. Up underneath, maybe some mold marks to deal with, but overall, really nicely done. Here we have our chassis and you can see the nice details in here, like the little ribs on there. And uh, there's where you're going to put your fuel cell and all the rest. This will have to be cut off and then sandpaper down. A bunch of seam lines in here, but overall not bad. Not much on the flash side, so that's good. Overall, I would give this top marks. Here we have our chrome parts tree, and this is just basically a repop from the 1990 Corvette. So that means that this 5.7 liter Corvette engine is the same engine that was jointly designed by Lotus and Chevrolet and made by Mercury Marine in Oklahoma. So if we take a look at this, you can see just how wonderful the detail is on this engine block. Again, very nice casting. It's nice that it's in chrome. Now I do have a how to build an engine that's all chrome plated on our website. So just take a look in our videos and you'll see it. I do think the wheels are actually redesigned because the 1991s had little bars in between here and that's now all gone. So that is basically the only difference of this chrome parts tree to the 1990 Corvette. Here we have our clear components, our transparent red components and our smoke colored components. 
Now the windshield and rear window have been in these Corvette kits since about 1984, so you can see a lot of flash forming on here. It is getting a little bit tired at this time. However, our rectangular tail lamps are brand new, as are the side smoke glass. So again, you can see just how nicely these are detailed. You've got a little bit of a texture on there. The smoke is quite heavy, but that's what makes it look nice. There's our tail lamps, and you can see a pattern in behind. And then again, our glass, and you will have to remove these bars. There's the nice defroster molded in place. Overall, a bit of sandpaper should clean all this up and make it fit nicely in your Corvette. Here we've got our Goodyear Eagle directional tires, and they have the raised lettering. There are two sizes. The ones in the front are a little bit lower or narrower than the ones in the back. I was going to say lower profile. Well, I guess they are too. <laughs> Anyway, there's the nice tread pattern, and again, make sure you have it rotating the right way around. There are arrows on the sides of the tires that will help you in order to determine which way those rotate. But overall, these are excellent tires. They require little cleanup at all and should fit directly into your wheels. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, here is the decal sheet. And right away we get a nice Corvette magazine license plate, a Texas 648 Texan, and then a Florida ZR Fun license plate. These are all the underhood decals, which go on the battery, the alternator, all that kind of thing. Then there's our ZR1 logos and the 40th anniversary decal, which I do believe goes in on the seats. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that look at our AMT Ertl 1993 Chevrolet Corvette ZR1 model kit. So, at the beginning of this video, I was talking about where you can go and find a great channel of Monster Hubbies, where we unbox model cars and we've got show and tell and tips and techs and many, many other cool things. So in order to get that, check this video out right up here where I explain all about that channel. And if you just want to go directly there to see what's going on, click this icon down here. And until next time, everybody, happy model building and we'll see you in the next video.